the Maasai lorded it over the Kikuyu and Kamba, and the latter, in turn, helped. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Esther, and you welcome back to another reaction video. If you're coming across this channel for the first time, you're super welcome. Do not forget to smash that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Hey guys, I'll be reacting to facts about slavery mentioned in school. Um, this is Thomas so well. Without further ado, let's dive into the video. Support us on Patreon and join our six exclusive content. Okay. This part is taken from the book Black, Rednecks, and White Rivers. Okay, untold facts about the story. Untold. Hmm. The instrumental use of the history of slavery today hmm. also underlies the claim that slavery grew out of racism. Hmm. For most of its long history, which includes most of the history of the human race, Slavery was largely not the enslavement of racially different people, for the simple reason that only in recent centuries has either the technology or the wealth existed to go to another continent to get slaves and transport them en masse across an ocean. People were enslaved because they were vulnerable, not because of how they looked. The peoples of the Balkans were enslaved by fellow Europeans, as well as by the peoples of the Middle East, for at least six centuries before the first African was wow. brought to the Western Hemisphere. Wow. Before the modern era, by and large, Europeans enslaved other Europeans, Asians enslaved other Asians, Africans enslaved other Africans, and the indigenous peoples mm. of the Western Hemisphere enslaved other indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere. Slavery was not based on race, much less mm. on theories about race. Only relatively wow. late in history... I'm sorry to do this. Okay, yeah, but that was what we were meant to understand, that um, slavery was based on race, like um, when the whites get to enslave the blacks and all. Okay, okay, wow. So now, that is why... In the olden days, like when it's because they are vulnerable, just when a um, particular um, set of persons wage war against another and they were restless or they couldn't actually win back, they take all the people in that town or that community as slaves and sell them. Wow. Did enslavement across racial lines occur on such a scale as to promote an ideology of racism that outlasted the institution of slavery itself? Wherever a separate people were enslaved, they were disdained or despised, whether they were different by country, religion, caste, race, or tribe. In East Africa... So now, is the black is actually enslaved themselves and sells them to the whites. Even the Europeans also does the same. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, let's go, guys. The Maasai were feared slave raiders, and other African tribes, either alone or in conjunction with Arabs, enslaved their more vulnerable neighbors. As late as 1891, mm. it was neighbors. reported that Manyuema slavers had demoralized surrounding tribes, destroying crops, and famine reigned everywhere. Even in the early 20th century, Abyssinians were still raiding other Africans and carrying off slaves. It was 1922 before the British had gained sufficient control in Tanganyika to stamp out slavery there. Arabs were the leading slave raiders in East Africa, ranging over an area larger than all of Europe. The total number of slaves exported from East Africa during the 19th century has been estimated to be at least 2 million. The form in which the story of slavery has reached most people today has been along the lines of the best-selling book and widely watched television miniseries, Roots, by Alex Haley. Challenged on the historical accuracy of Roots, Haley said, I tried to give my people a myth to live by. This instrumental use of history, or purported history, is open to the same objections as other instrumental myth-making. Despite the impression created by Roots, during the era of the massive slave trade from West Africa, a white man was more likely to catch malaria in Africa than to catch slaves himself. The average yes. life expectancy of a white man That's in the true. interior of sub-Saharan Africa at that time was less than one year. By and large, men from Europe or the Western Hemisphere came to the coasts of Africa 
bought their slaves, and left as soon as possible. Even so, mm. the death rates among the white crews of the ships carrying slaves to the Western Hemisphere were as high as the death rates among the slaves themselves. It was only much later, after quinine and other medical measures enabled Europeans to survive where there were tropical diseases, was it possible for them to invade Africa in force and establish empires there. But by then, the Atlantic slave trade had already been ended. During the era of that trade, yeah. Africa was largely ruled by Africans, who established the conditions under which hmm. slave sales took place. Hmm. The crew of a slave ship was in no position to defy African rulers and their armies by going out across the land and capturing people willy-nilly. The stronger African peoples captured and enslaved the weaker peoples. The same pattern found over the centuries in Europe, Asia, the Western Hemisphere, and Polynesia. In Yasa land, the Ngoni and Yao swaggered over and terrorized other tribes. In Uganda, the Baganda made life miserable for their neighbors. And the Nioro and Hima of Anko enslaved Toro women and children. The Tutsi dominated the Hutu in Rwanda. The Maasai lorded it over the Kikuyu and Kamba. And the latter, in turn, held the Indorobo in a kind of serfdom. It was precisely the fact that Europeans, except for the Portuguese, seldom participated in the raids that captured and enslaved Africans that enabled most people in Europe and the Americas to remain oblivious to the traumatic experience that this was, with some Africans committing suicide to avoid capture and wives being whipped as they tried to cling to their husbands or children. Historian David Brian Davis pointed out that Europeans had little contact with the actual process of enslavement, and that as late as 1721, the Royal African Company asked its agents to investigate the modes of enslavement in the interior. Europeans typically saw only the end results, enslaved people being offered for sale on the coast. It was much the same story in the Ottoman Empire, where those who bought slaves had no idea what these slaves had been through before. The unique position of the Western world in the history, and especially the destruction of slavery, need not imply that there was unanimity within the West on this institution. In addition to whites who defended the enslavement of Africans on racial grounds, or who opposed general emancipation on social grounds, there were many whites and even blacks, who defended slavery as a matter of self-interest as slave owners. Although most black owners of slaves in the United States were only nominal owners of members of their own families, there were thousands of other blacks in the antebellum South who were commercial slave owners, just like their white counterparts. An estimated one-third of the free persons of color in New Orleans were slave owners, and thousands of these slave owners volunteered to fight for the Confederacy during the Civil War. Black slave owners wow. were even more common in the Caribbean. In short, there were many defenders of slavery in the West, even in the 19th century. And outside the West, slavery was too widely accepted to require defense. No other nation ended slavery in the same way as the United States did, and few ended it after so short a struggle, as history is measured. How and why did slavery end in most of the world? There were two major processes. Over the centuries, as more and more territories around the world consolidated into nation-states with their own armies and navies, Raiding those territories to capture and enslave the people who lived within them became more hazardous in itself and also risked military retaliation against the countries from which the raiders came. Thus, more and more peoples became off-limits to slave raiders over time. Put differently, the areas which remained subject to slave raiding over the centuries were primarily those where the people lived in smaller or weaker societies. Such societies continued to exist where it was difficult for geographic or other reasons, to consolidate large areas under one government. This was true of the Balkans, the backwaters of Asia, and much of sub-Saharan Africa. By the early modern era, sub-Saharan Africa, with its numerous and severe geographic handicaps, was one of the last remaining areas from which vast numbers of people could be enslaved. Wow. This is, this is so deep in itself. This is so deep. 
one thing I, I, I want that, that keep coming to my mind is that though we um, this might say that um, slavery has actually reduced its very minimum or has ended, but I see yes, I, um, I, I had a lot of stories of persons, you know, it, it's true, like Africans, enslaved Africans, and so on and so forth. See, some persons who come to a particular country, let me just use my country as an example, Nigeria, tells you that there's job in um, Arab, there's job in social place, if you like to collect this particular amount per month, and a lot of persons will, will come in, especially youth, and you take them through the desert. A lot of them die at the desert. I forgot that country they go to, a lot of persons die in desert, a lot of persons beg for water while they go um, um, through the road, some drinks their own urine that is another that is slavery and some of those persons that end up and manage to get their falls um sick some i had a story recently i think last week a lady was um traveled someone helped them to travel to i forgot the, the country if i remember i will drop it just i'll write it here so you can see it through the road she said according to her in their own vehicle nobody died but they could see a lot of bones, bones of humans at the road. And in other vehicles, some persons die and they would just push them by the roadside. Their water got finished. Some of them were asked for, the, the males were asked the, the female to actually wait for them to drink because they are so thirsty that thirstiness kill a lot of them, not even hunger now, thirstiness. And apart from that, when they get to the country, she, she, she did not die actually. But when she gets there, she was so sick that when she coughed, she coughed out, blood and she couldn't even walk and when she started walking after some months all her salary for like six to one year is being paid for to the person that brought them that is slavery that is slavery advanced slavery the only difference there is that they were not being um held with um melters and beating and all for them to be taken but they were cajoled into something they would actually not um like to have entered into you know that is slavery. And after some months, before they could pay back, and even some Arab um, Arab um, bosses, some of the male bosses sleep with, I mean, rape their um, helpers from Nigeria, rape them, beat them, maltreat them, you know, do let them do a lot of things, use chemicals and all. This is advanced slavery, seriously. And it's so painful and disheartening. I just pray that, um, the government and God should help each country to develop a more um, industrious uh, companies that youth can actually work and get satisfied where they are. Even if they will travel, it will be from their own, uh, you know, from from their own full knowledge of where they are going to to make um, to greener pastures, not where they will go to and die there or fall very ill or sick. I appreciate the person that actually documented this topic so well. It's amazing and this is so beautiful. I hope you guys enjoy this and also love my commentary on this. If you'd like me to write some more about this video or something like this, you drop that at the comment section and I'll see you in my next video. Signing out. Bye.